Hey, everybody, good afternoon. Um, here's the thing, you can't lean Agile Safe, DevOps, SRE, or even DevSecOps your way out of a bad organizational culture. So one of the things I've been doing for the last couple of years is somebody called it um, organizational anthropology. And the idea is where I go in and I don't touch any computers or anything and I spend a month with a company and I just interview people at the edge, the people that do the work. And I find more about their security vulnerabilities in the meta sense by just talking. These are complex systems. You have to understand the people. And what I've done is I've sort of categorized these into seven patterns. I call it the, the seven deadly diseases of DevOps. But the most deadly of all is security and vulnerability theater. And it magically just funnels when I interview people about work, how they do things. And there's an interesting thing. During World War II, um, they were looking at sort of bullet holes on planes and how to repair them. And somebody said, Abraham Walt said, holy shit. We got it wrong. We're looking in the wrong place. These are the ones that are surviving, the surviving bodies. We need to look where the bullet holes aren't. Right? So I, I take that approach. Elliot Gorat, who wrote Beyond the Goal and the Goal, said that like, the way he looked at complexity is that actually system A is way more complex than system B because it has more degrees of freedom. Right? And so one of the things that, so that, that concept of using those terms like Agile DevOps, I go in and everybody wants to tell me how everything works. The CMDB is fine, this. It's the fine dog with no flames. What I need to do is get to that sort of system A where I really get them to find out how they're really on fire. So this is interesting, right? This might be an example of how Equifax got breached, right? The Jakarta struts too. But like, if you go in and you look at like the sort of Wall Street Journal or the CIO's version of this thing, he said basically somebody didn't patch something. It was that simple. Right? Bullshit, right? It's way more complicated. And in fact, the Congress in 2018, you want to read an amazing report. They actually did a really good job of doc documenting the whole kill chain. Everything went wrong. Things like IDS certs being expired for 18 months prior to breach, right? So, it, but, and I can't go into all of this because it's a night, right? Uh, but like one of the things that was really interesting, you know, you've probably heard of Conway's Law, right? This, uh, the, this idea that, you know, sort of we're bounded by our communication structure. Well, you know, and here's uh, Melvin Conway's, right? So, we think of it in software, but actually it, it applies to organizational design. So in the case of Equifax, which is interesting, they were bound, some of their problems were actually a Conway's Law beauty in that, so if you look here, the CISO reported the chief legal officer, right? So there was an organizational design structure that was already broken. So you could say there was some incompetence to the CISO, or you could say there was some incompetence in the fact this place was not really a software company. Because when she was interviewed under uh, congressional testimony, they asked her, why didn't she notify the CIO of the breach? And she said she didn't think about it. Now, I would say that's an organizational incompetency, not a personal incompetency, uh, right? The fact that she was structured that way. You take the Capital One breach. You, some people would say it was an insider threat. Bullshit, right? Um, but it, <laughs> right, yeah. But what it was is I could have done this, and I'm not a security person. Somebody left bypass on in a WAF, and they basically hit on an authorized, and they did service request forgery. So one of the things I did early this year with Nike, PNC, Capital One, Marriott, Sabre, and Microsoft is something called automated governance. This is out there. It's free. It's a Creative Commons. The idea was to sort of put integrity of your sort of audits. And I got to give Aaron and Reinhardt a shout out for this. He's the one that sort of made me think about this. The way we do audits today is really a subjective set of attestations. You take a change record, somebody, Bob tells Sue, Sue looks at this, Jane says that, and then auditors come in and look at it. So our idea was to turn that into objective. I'll say cough blockchain, but it doesn't have to be. Um, the idea would be uh, first order, change 30-day audits in enterprises to half a day because they're literally immutable shots. Second is increase the efficacy of your audits from like 10 to 90 percent. Another place where I got started is was from Topo Pallet Capital One where he wrote an article in 2017 about how they did sort of integrity from a policy perspective. They called them the 16 gates. You couldn't get auto, auto commit without that. And so what we did in that design is we basically broke it into seven stages and we had 75 attestations. These sort of mutable SHAs that actually sh show the footprint. So when an auditor comes in, they look at a SHA and it's a chain of events and you move. And we tried to use Graphius, which was um, an open source project from Google that they uh, used for actually uh, Google Container Registry. It didn't quite work for our example, even though it was designed for this. It was an attestation data store. Uh, so we actually wound up having to build our own. And uh, this is the model. I can't go through all of them. The book is out there. It's Creative Commons, free to download on IT Revolution. But each, each stage had its controls, risks, actors, input, output. It's really, really, I mean, I, I just got the thing together. 
So my credit is I got all those really smart people in the room, but it's an amazing document. It's out there, it's free, it's downloadable. So I think I'm done. Thank <laughs> you.